Hello, it's Peter again. So welcome to another video in the series on wireless MBUS. Today we will look closer into the modes and some use cases. In the last video we got an overview of the different modes in wireless MBUS. The modes differ due to the frequency, the modulation, coding and the data rate. In this video we'll look at some use cases and which mode to use. We will start by looking at some characteristics of the different modes and also into the link budgets. So about the modes, we have the S mode which is uh, for stationary readout using a quite low data rate. So this is for uh, installation where you have a, a stationary gateway and typically receiving data not very frequent from the meter. The T mode however has a higher data rate and therefore shorter transmissions and this is more suitable for frequent transmissions using lower um, power and therefore longer battery lifetime. The C mode was introduced in order to support drive-by solutions where you have very frequent transmissions and the C mode is using NRC coding which means every chip or symbol is the same as one bit and this further extends the battery lifetime. Then came the N mode which is a narrow band mode with higher sensitivity and also higher output power in the 169 megahertz band. It has very long range and also very good penetration in buildings. This means it's very suitable for meters that are installed deep inside buildings, in basements or even in pits. Then we also have the frame format B which further reduce the overhead and make each transmission shorter. So the frame format B can be used for the C mode and the N mode. So about the typical use. So the T mode is very widely used it's 100 uh, kilo chips per, uh, per second and it gives very short transmissions and therefore suitable for battery operation. The mode C as mentioned was designed for very frequent transmissions in drive-by applications. So one example is where the garbage truck picks up the signals from the meters as it drives through the streets. So both of these modes are used for indoor networks where concentrators or gateways talk to a few meters. Or it can also be for electricity meters that acts as a gateway for other utility meters such like gas and water meters and heat meters. And it could also be communicating to an uh, in-home display. The C mode is used more and more but requires a more sophisticated receiver. This is because of the NRC coding. It's also possible to have a dual mode receiver that can receive either T mode or C mode. An example of such a receiver is the RC1180 MBUS 3 module. Then the mode N was developed for very large coverage, so typically 1 to 2 kilometers range in urban areas. And it's also suitable for difficult radio environments, such as we experience with water and gas meters. These meters may be installed uh, down in, uh, in pits or inside uh, uh, steel cabinets or down in basements. It uses a low frequency in the VHF range at 169 megahertz and this further helps to get the range and also penetration into buildings. 
And finally, using a narrowband radio, which means 12.5 kHz channels, we can get very good sensitivity in the receiver and also very good selectivity and thereby higher reliability. Finally, we can compare the link budget between these modes. I uh, have highlighted the T mode, the C mode and the N mode. So to the left here we see the frequency band and then we have the mode. Uh, further we have the, the chip or the symbol rate and then the bit rate which then depends on what kind of coding is used. P out is the maximum output power as it is allowed by the radio regulations. S typical is the typical sensitivity of the receiver and S min is the minimum as specified in the wireless MBUS standard. And then we have the, the typical link budget. Further we have the typical antenna gain. So we see that for 433 MHz and even more for 169 MHz we typically have a quite short antenna, shorter than a resonant antenna, which means that we will actually have some loss in the antenna and thereby giving us the effective link budget on the far right. So comparing the T mode and the C mode at 868 MHz with the 169 MHz N mode, we see that the N mode has a much better link budget. And this is what we uh, utilize for water and gas meter installations. Uh, the drawback, of course, of 169 MHz is a lower data rate, which is 2.4 kilobits or 4.8 kilobits, which then means longer transmissions and increased um, power consumption. But still, it is possible to make water and gas meters using 169 MHz with lifetimes from 15 to 20 years. So, don't forget to check out our other video snippets at our website and hope this one was useful to you. Please share with your friends and colleagues. Thanks for watching and see you soon.